Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all um, enjoying the sunshine that I'm enjoying today. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, and we have a beautiful day. I um, hope it's dry up in New Jersey if you're in the East Coast and wherever you are. So let's just jump to slide three and take a look at that first uh, slide here. This is what we're going to be talking about, this PQRI, and we'll move right on. You see the way I've got this set up, and it's set up as a reason for a reason with measure 76 on the top and then, of course, your two uh, bars following that. So I have some reference material on slide four from the ASA and the CMS.gov where we get all of that. There's also a list a website for the feedback reports and I think you need some passcodes and so on to get your feedback reports, but we'll talk about that later. On slide five, it just shows you a copy of the ASA website. The ASA, this is the latest thing <clears throat> that I was able to find on their website dated December 15, 2009. But the ASA does try to keep you up to date on all the PQRI information, and it's always very helpful. So let's move on to slide six, and we'll just start and get a little bit of history here. I'm I'm a history person. It's always interesting to me where these things get started. I don't know if you remember the old uh, PVRP, the Physician Voluntary Reporting Program that they talked and touted so much in 2006. CMS was going to start that with 16 measures, and that was going to be their quality, health quality reporting uh, mechanism. Well, they really were looking at this uh, for the same reason. The PVRP was actually the same goals as the PQRI. In January of 2006, they actually passed, uh, they started this PQR, or I'm sorry, January 2006 was the PVRP, but then they didn't get anybody to be very interested in that. Uh, nobody seemed to want to report that. And I wonder why, uh, because, gosh, these physicians could do a lot of extra work and get nothing for it and know that they were taking good care of their patients, which I think is the goal of physicians all along. Well, let's go on to the next slide, and you see <clears throat> what had to happen. Physicians needed to have an incentive. With reimbursement going down and work going up and administrative burdens getting more and becoming more uh, convoluted all the time, physicians really had no particular reason. They were already taking care of their patients and getting their CMEs and doing the best they can for quality health reporting. So then CMS decided, okay, we have to do something here. We have to jumpstart this program. And during the second half of the year 2007, um, the first reporting period was the 2007 second half of the year, which during that time didn't get a lot of participation because, again, it was just beginning. Uh, moving on to slide eight, you can see that that started with a 1.5% of the individual eligible professionals could earn 1.5%. Every year, <clears throat> the CMS will add measures, and measures are added every year. When I say CMS adds measures, of course, there's large organizations of physician organizations and participation in creating these reporting quality measures. And just like the fee schedule, every year and the rules that CMS sends down to us, constant changing regulations, the PQRI program will change every year or be modified, additions, subtractions, various things will happen every year. So you have to stay abreast of that. Just like we look at the um, Federal Register, the physician's final final rule that's published every November, that's exactly where you're going to find a good deal of the decisions that CMS makes 
in this PQRI program. And so we will need to constantly be updating ourselves. When this program first started, everybody was fairly, um, I think, confused by it because it's a new program. Anytime CMS initiates a new program, we do get confused. And luckily for anesthesia, anesthesia was really one of the easiest or simplest to report because we just started with that one measure 30, which was the antibiotics. So now they're adding to it, and they will add every year. So to qualify for the PQRI incentive payment, the eligible professional, or EP, as we're going to say quite a bit, we, they talk about the EPs, and that's the eligible professional. They have to meet certain pri criteria for satisfactory reporting. Um, at the bottom there, you see where that, we've got three ways to report. There's a, not we, I shouldn't say we. There are three reporting mechanisms. One, we have the claims reporting, claims-based reporting, and that's the measure just is reported on your claim. Number two, a qualified registry, and number three, via a qualified electronic health record. The health record, for sure, right now is not available to the anesthesia people, even if they are using electronic uh, health records right now in the operating room, they still wouldn't be able to report the PQRI that way. The registry at this time is not available. And um, CMS is actually, just to kind of clue you in, CMS is considering limiting the claims-based mechanism of reporting these quality measures, and they're thinking about doing it after 2010. Well, 22 of the, they had 22 new proposed measures for 2010 for this year, and 16 of them, 16 of 22 measures, they could, you could only report them by a qualified registry. So, it's really kind of interesting. Five of the 13 measure groups, there's 13 measure groups, and five of those are registry only. Now, the ASA did voice some concern and wrote a letter to 